Hello, welcome to another installment of the Central American Group's podcast, in which experts discuss topics related to doing business in Costa Rica, El Salvador, and the rest of the region. Good morning, and welcome to another episode of the uh, podcast that we here at the Central American Group do on topics that have to do with uh, economic issues in Costa Rica and El Salvador and the rest of the Central American region. Today, we're lucky and fortunate to have with us Patricia Figueroa. She is the executive director of the Textile Apparel and Free Trade Zone Association of El Salvador. Good morning, uh, Patricia. How are you? Good morning, Steve. I'm doing fine, and thank you very much for hosting me. Well, it's our pleasure. Um, Maybe you could start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and about the organization that you represent. Uh, Yes, indeed. Uh, I have been heading this association for the past 10 years. Uh, Our chamber gathers about 100 members that basically represent the full segment of the textile apparel and free trade zone industry of El Salvador. Uh, about myself, in my throughout my career, I have been engaged in the area of economic development mainly, be it in government and also in private sector, in different positions. Um, but always focusing on uh, promoting exports and investment to my country in different capacities. Well, thanks a lot for this, that synopsis. Uh, let's start with the questions. Um, the first one I'd like to ask is, why should companies think about investing in the textile apparel and free zones in, in El Salvador? Uh, I would like to start by saying that our sector has a substantial weight in our economy. It's it's one of the pillars of the Salvadorian economy, and it has a great deal of importance in the economic arena. For the past 10 years, our sector has contributed in average to about 40% of total exports. So we have been leading exports development in El Salvador. Uh, Only last year, we exported 2,600 million, 734 million more than in 2020. So the sector has maintained a steady weight in the economy and we look forward to the opportunity to continue this growth. Uh, in addition to that, it it translates into direct employment generation of about 85,000 jobs, which is substantial. Uh, why to invest in the sector and why to invest in El Salvador, I would like to say, not only because of the weight and maturity of the industry, but also... I would, I would uh, highlight the fact that our industry operates within the framework of the Dear CAFTA agreement. So that, that's the framework where we operate. And in parallel, we have a very competitive and sound business environment. And there are several legislation that favors the attraction of FDI, such as the free trade zones and commercialization law, the international services law, and a variety of legislation in the area of the use of renewable energy. Uh, so thus, I would, I would say that there is a, a framework of legislation that favors and that, that is very attractive for foreign direct investment, in addition to CAFTA. I think that being within the free trade agreement, the ARCAFTA, has really made us one of the most important sectors in the in the region. Um, another aspect that I would like to highlight is the fact that because of the maturity of the industry, because of the fact that we comply with a lot of, of regulations that are immersed in the DR CAFTA agreement. Our industry has one of the highest standards of compliance in areas such as labor and social responsibility, sustainability, and particularly now, when a we're positioned, we are in the best position to be able to trace our products 
product trustability, one of the elements that a lot of investors overseas and particularly in the US are looking at at this moment. Uh, in that, and because we work with the brands, we are aiming tirelessly to comply with all the areas of the best environmental practices, working hand in hand with our U.S. customer and brands. So, so there is a lot of compliance. There is a lot of innovation in the segment. And to finalize uh, this brief synopsis, I, I would say that the speed to market, the geographic location where we are, really positions our industry and the region, the Central American region, and also particularly El Salvador, as a close by near option and friend to do business with. Thank you for that uh, informative bit of in- information. Um, I would like to know, and I'm sure our listeners would like to know, is what is the textile industry in El Salvador composed of? Yeah, uh, let me start by, by saying that the success of our industry is the fact that it is vertically integrated. The rule of origin yarn forwards, it is allows us to deliver full package options to our most demanding clients. The in, in El Salvador, we basically have two very important uh, clusters. One is the cotton cluster, and the other one is the synthetic cluster. The cotton cluster was the first cluster developed in El Salvador, and at the moment is the one that generates most employment in the sector, and it focuses on the production of intimate apparel, dresses, skirts, towels, sweaters, socks, among others. All of our manufacturing base is in the capacity to deliver labeled, packaged, packed and packaged garments, whatever our customers syndicate. Uh, The second cluster really was born out of a very geared strategy. It was after CAFTA went into effect that the U.S. producers and the Central American producers join hands to build this integrated production platform, particularly in the synthetics, in the synthetic sector. And that has allowed us to remain very competitive. So as I, as I was mentioning, we have two very different uh, clusters. We are one of the most important providers of fabrics to the rest of Central America. Not only do, do we keep the 10th position in the U.S. as the one of the leading producer of apparel goods that are delivered to the U.S., but we are also an important key player in the delivery of yarn and fabrics to the rest of Central America. Uh, the companies in the synthetic clusters manufacture value-added products, particularly in athletics and high-performance wear. El Salvador is also specializing in a lot of the short, um, short uh, production in niche value-added, like high yoga and wear. So th- there is a variety of production, and we believe that there is a great opportunity to, to be part of that chain and diversify the production base already existing in El Salvador. What are the, the advantages of the synthetic t- textile cluster in El Salvador? I, I think that one of the main factors is, is precisely that it's vertically integrated, so from yarn forward. So you can, you can get your production from the yard to the apparel, to the apparel made good, delivered in a short time with a lot of technology and capacity that has been developed. We have here a very important U.S. companies such as Unify, CS Central America, 
and other regional players, but not necessarily from the U.S., like the Petenati Company, one of the leading high-performance fabric producers. So, so the fact that this cluster also has invade, invested a lot in the design of fibers, high performance, and other innovative products. I believe that the fact that we are also close in a very short contained geographic proximity, most of the most of the companies in the synthetic clusters are at a very close range of mobility. So that allows for the product to move from place to place in a very short distance. There is a lot of interaction in in the players. And as I said, when you look at the current situation, when you look at all the near shoring and French shoring, and the fact that it is so important to be able to trace your product and also have uh, production closer to the borders to strengthen the Western Hemisphere supply chain. I think El Salvador and both the clusters, and since we're talking now about the synthetic clusters, are in the best position to to deliver those products. What are the biggest challenges that the textile industry in El Salvador faces today? I think that the one of the biggest challenges that we have is that that we definitely need to be able to attract more foreign investment. And I think this is a great opportunity precisely to to invite. Uh, We need to diversify more our production base. We have a very solid production base focused on synthetic, on synthetic high performance activewear. But there are other opportunities. There are other niche opportunities for other companies looking at this, at this country that can benefit from all the conditions that are existing. I think um, maximizing this opportunity, the challenge definitely, I think, is how do we continue to grow? And I think this is a great opportunity to invite companies to look at El Salvador and to look at what the kind of companies that we have here. Well, you know, from our perspective at the Central American Group, um, we get a lot of inquiries, uh, people looking to have things made in textile. So hopefully that'll continue in, in the business and the clusters that you mentioned here will, will continue to grow. What's the outlook for the industry five years from now, let's say? We definitely envision ourselves as a leader. In the, I mean, our vision is to consolidate this platform as a leader of high-value added product with a more diversified base. We do see the industry growing. I mean, there is there has never been a better momentum, I would say, after the signing of the CAFTA DR With all the conditions, we have a great partnership with the U.S. uh, that we are continuously strengthening. So I I believe that we see steady growth of our industry. We see our industry being able to grow in exports. And um, we envision really an important growth in this sector, particularly as we take advantage of, of this enormous opportunity, which, by the way, we are uh, constantly working towards this objective with our partners in the U.S., uh, organizations of the National Council of Textiles, the AAFA, and others are really our partners in this So as we continue to strengthen those partnerships, take advantage of the current momentum, I think we will see a lot of growth in El Salvador in the next five years. Well, that's great. We, like I mentioned, uh, have a lot of uh, people making inquiries about the textile sector in El Salvador. And I'm sure this podcast will be listened to by some of those people that being said, if somebody wants to get in touch with you to, to find out more, how can they do that? 
Uh, most definitely, we uh, they can co- contact us through our email. Uh, it's dirección arroba camtex dot com dot sv, and we will be glad to answer any inquiries or work with the people to understand what the conditions are in our industry and also in El Salvador. And if it's okay with you in the text that is below uh, the podcast player, uh, I'd like to put a link to your LinkedIn profile. If you have one, would that be okay? I um, I don't have one updated. That's terrible. I, I will update it and I will definitely give it to you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, that'll facilitate uh, people. Most definitely. People contacting you. Well, I want to thank you for joining us today. It's very interesting. And uh, we know that the future is going to be bright for the textile and apparel industry in El Salvador. And and thank you very much for joining us. You're welcome, Stephen. It's my pleasure. Thank you for listening. Sign up to receive the Central American Group's quarterly newsletter by visiting www.thecentralamericangroup.com.